Hello inventors, welcome to the channel and today is the day to test and tell you my opinion about a Brazilian filament called F3D. Well, actually, it's the ABS from F3D. It's a filament that uh, I have been using for almost seven years now, but I used to uh, print with this filament using my old printer, a Prusa i3 model, that it's an open printer. Yeah, an open printer using an ABS filament in a very cold place. This is the first time I've tested this filament with the newest printers on the market like K1, K1 Max and FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro. So keep tuned and let's see how this ABS can surprise you. Let's invent! I just like to make it clear that uh, this is not a sponsored video, okay? F3D sent me about 10 kilograms of filaments to make tests and to make this video telling my uh, sincere opinion about this filament. So honestly, I shouldn't have to reveal this filament, like testing this filament, because I've been using it uh, with my old printer for uh, almost a decade. But uh, as I'm using new printers now, so I feel that I have to uh, try to print and calibrate using the new printers and the new slicer softwares uh, that I have on my hands. Uh, usually, I uh, have been using the Simplify 3D uh, software on my old printer, but now uh, I'm more often to use uh, modern slicers like Orca and Cura and other softwares. So I've received uh, nine different colors of this filament. Uh, let's start with the na natural ABS color, that it's uh, uncolored ABS uh, filament. Actually, this is not the first one I've printed. Uh, I start printing with other colors like black, and then I start calibrating as I'm changing the color. So if you look at the black one, you can see that half of the Benchy, uh, specifically the bottom part, you have an, an alignment issue that it's not actually an alignment issue that it's actually a cooling issue because abs it's a very elastic material when it changes the temperature so the cooling process on abs printing is very very important and it's one of the most challenging calibration uh, using the abs when you are 3d printing okay so this one you can see this mark and you can see uh, on other models uh, some variations of configurations like we have this awesome blue abs where you can see the seams very very clear at the top of the benchy and the same effect uh, at the bottom. This is most related to the cooling process than uh, any other kind of calibration or the filament behavior. As this is a very very fluid uh, filament, I had to set the seam gap to zero and reduce the wipe speed to close this seam mark uh, as you can see on basically the most of models I've tested. So when we try different colors, like we have this one that it's a part of a multicolor filament spool that uh, the salmon uh, color, it's just one of the colors, but uh, as I'm printing a Benchy, uh, I didn't use enough to, to see the color changing uh, occurring. You must remember that some kind of filaments can change the behavior depending on the color, depending on the pigment that are used to colorize the filament. So you can see different behavior depending on the color. So this is the salmon, this is the pink. So we have three different tones of uh, green, like this light green, pure green, and this is called a uh, military green. So all those colors uh, may depend on a special or small adjustments uh, on the filament behavior so you can have the perfect cooling and the perfect extruding, okay? 
So I've tested this filament with all these colors using two printers, the Creality K1 and the FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro. And I've made the calibration on both of those printers. And this is one of the parts that made me amazed with this filament when I was running the MaxFlow uh, calibration. Look at this. When I ran the MaxFlow calibration on uh, Creality K1, I have very good results. So this is the mark for 24 millimeters cubic per second. So this is the max flow measurement unit uh, you will see on your slicer. So at the Creality K1, we have 24 millimeters cubic per second. But when I ran this same filament on the Flash Forge, I got a uh, a kind of uh, unexpected result. On this test that I ran on a FlashForge 5M Pro, this one right here at the top, almost ending the test, is the first occurrence of under extrusion uh, issues. So this test on FlashForge returned 31 millimeters cubic per second. Okay, I made a mistake here uh, measuring the results. So uh, I will try to explain. Oh, on this test was a 40 millimeters uh, cubic per second maximum test. Okay, so uh, as we have here an expansion uh, issue, turning this uh, high higher than what it should be, I've decided to measure from the top uh, and try to subtract the number of millimeters we have from the top to the bottom. So the number I had here was 1.74 uh, millimeters uh, of difference from the top. As the maximum high of this test should be 70 millimeters, so we have 70 millimeters minus 1.74 millimeters, then we divide by 2 and then uh, we add five millimeters cubic per second. That is the speed the test uh, has on the very, the very beginning. So at the end, we have 39.13 millimeters cubic per second. It's almost the top uh, of this test. And it's basically the three millimeters cubic per second higher than the maximum capacity of the flash forge extruder uh, so it's a very very fluid uh, filament <laughs> so then i try to test this filament uh, on a different kind of printing so i've choose to print this mandalorian boost so look at the size of this piece it's almost the size of my head and some people say that it's uh, kind of a crazy uh, trying to print something so big using ABS. But the results uh, was awesome because we have no cracking, no kind of a rop or bending or any kind of weird behavior because this is ABS and this is a massive ABS. When I was calibrating this part to print, I notice uh, different behavior depending on the cooling process compared to the Banshee. So when you are printing ABS uh, in a very, very small size like this one, you must to increase the cooling capacity to cool down each layer before the next layer get over that. So when you are printing a big part like this one, you have a wider area on each layer that gives the print and gives the filament uh, time enough to cool down without using the cooler itself, the fan itself. So printing a part like this one uh, can provide the printer the ability to print uh, very, very fast, even using ABS because you have a bigger area and then you have more time to that layer to get cool uh, before the next layer get over that. If you try to force the printer to uh, put the, the next layer before the actual layer had cooled, cooled down uh, properly, you will have this kind of results. You will have a kind of catastrophe where the 
extrusion nose will basically drag the filament that was deposit uh, on the the layer before so then you have this kind of effect so at the mandalorian piece i could print uh, using more than 400 millimeters per second on speed especially on the inside parts the infill parts of the the mandalorian so Comparing the two sizes, when I was printing the Banshee, like this one, the original size uh, Banshee, the maximum speed I got was uh, 300 millimeters per second, I guess, and it was at the bottom, just on the bottom, because you have a lot of small parts, small perimeters to print, and then the, the modern slicers will try to reduce the speed to make sure that the filament is uh, well accommodated before trying to add a new layer on the top. So what I got here was actually a 10 hours printing time using ABS uh, with the right calibration for the F3D filament. When I try to slice using the default filament configuration, this part uh, would take about 13 hours to print and then using the right calibration for the ABS from F3D, I was able to print uh, in about 10 hours. So this is the main difference between uh, high fluid filaments and regular filaments uh, or common filaments as you can find on the market. Then I try another challenge for this uh, filament that was trying to print something smaller and way more detailed. So I've tried this chest uh, pieces from Star Wars. Then uh, look at the camera, look at the clothes, uh, when you see the Luke Skywalker uh, details, especially the face of the, the character, uh, and see how detailed is this printed. Uh, and I'm using the 0.4 millimeters nose uh, on this printing, okay? So with uh, 0.2 millimeters uh, thickness, uh, of each layer so it's not a special nose not a special uh, layer configuration this is just the default configuration for any printer that you can buy on the market especially the k1 and the flash forge 5m pro so this is not a special configuration for resolution and yes it's a special configuration for the filament so the calibration of this filament and when we look at the yoda part uh, we have this very very small and almost sharpened ears from from yoda and this is a printing result using an fdm printing with an excellent result especially considering that this was uh, printed using a k1 so even when we have something like the Mandalorian weapon uh, at the back of the, the character, you can see that the nose was able to print a very, very small perimeter uh, depositing filament at the top of the weapon. So this is an awesome result and it shows the great uh, fluidity of this uh, F3D filament. Uh, unfortunately, the F3D, it's a Brazilian uh, a filament company, and currently they are not exporting uh, their products. So I hope in the future they uh, can start exporting, they start selling their filaments uh, around the world, because this is a great company that I have been following for a long time. Uh, and I would like to keep the, the channel doors opened uh, for any kind of companies that uh, produce uh, filaments. Uh, if you want to send me filaments uh, to test and to uh, calibrate and validate here on the channel, uh, I will be very happy to receive your products and then make a video, okay? So I hope you like it, this video, even not having the possibility to buy this filament in other countries. And if you want me to try, uh, 
specific filament brand, uh, please send a message to that brand and ask them to send me some filaments. So I will be very happy to test here and to show the results. So this is everything for today. Thank you very much for watching this video to here and see you on the next video. And don't forget, let's keep inventing.